At the end of chapter one, I encourage you to spend some time thinking about your own experience of the failure of faith. If you've been able to do that, if you've been able to come up with an experience or maybe even a list of experiences where your faith was tested to the point of almost breaking down or even breaking down, then you've begun to think about this idea of what does it look like actually to recover from failure. In this chapter, I wanted to lay out some very basic ideas for what does a healthy process of recovering from failure look like. Very simple things. There's so much more that's been written about these things by people who are just very excellent teachers on the spiritual journey. So I would point you to any of those resources that are listed uh, in the footnotes in this chapter. Um, and I would love for you to engage in those things more deeply. But the basic, the very, very basic ideas are that we should never engage in this journey alone. The role of community is just vitally important for us, especially as we attempt anything hard. It's going to make things that are scary feel less scary. It's going to make things that are complex and hard more manageable if we engage in them together. And recovering from failure is the same way. Friends around us actually can support us when our faith is weak. And we can support them when they're having that same experience. Then the second thing was that we need to make sure that we are engaging in regular restorative Sabbath rest. We need to make sure that our lives include the discipline of rest because God commands it because it's so good for us. In this culture of constantly going, 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 so many of us feel like it's just fine to neglect the idea of Sabbath rest in general. Uh, and it just doesn't prove to be a good idea. So what does it look like to engage regularly in rest, to stop working and to spend some time for quiet and reflection? The third thing really is about making sure that we're, on, uh, we're incorporating a healthy spiritual diet into our lives on a regular basis, especially when we're attempting anything hard. Athletes know this really well. If you're going to work out at a level that, uh, that an Olympic athlete um, does, for example, an elite athlete needs to tune their diet to make sure their body can maximize everything that it can get. Now, we need to think the same way. If we're going to attempt anything hard, then our spiritual diet needs to be healthy. And then the last thing I included was just a simple set of very basic spiritual disciplines that have become profoundly meaningful, meaningful for me, especially in these hard places. Things like the examine, a tool that you can use with friends to just help you process what God is doing around you and how you're experiencing that. It's simple, but it's deceptively powerful. These principles are just so basic and so important. I want to make sure you have some time to actually engage with them. I would encourage you, if you're reading this book with a small group, to spend some time right now as you uh, come to the end of this chapter actually engaging in the discipline of the exam and try it out for the first time if you haven't tried it yet and see what God does in this along the way discipline to help you understand how he is at work in your life. It's these sort of simple things that are deceptively helpful and places where God meets us along the way. So after the, the experience of the exam, feel free, please, to, to process the questions at the end of this chapter. And then I'll see you again at the end of chapter five.